Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys. This is the first episode of our new series about Android game development in C++ using the Android game development kit and OpenGL ES. And this series is for complete beginners so you don't need to have any experience with Android or OpenGL ES. Alright so first of all to get started you should go ahead and install Android Studio. You can just install the latest version. I am not on the latest version right now but you know this is going to be pretty similar. And uh, uh, to install Android Studio if you are having any trouble I have got a video on that topic. And anyways after you have set up Android Studio you would be when you open up uh, Android Studio you will be presented with a screen similar to this. You might not have any projects here but uh, uh, the overall layout should be kind of similar and uh, we, to get started we are going to go ahead and hit this new project button. So we are going to just hit this and here we will be presented with a bunch of different templates and the category that we are interested in is the phone and tablet one obviously if we have got one for Wear OS, television etc but uh, those are not uh, what we want to use and uh, in here new in the new project one you can see that there are basically different uh, templates with regard to activities. Now if you haven't done Android uh, uh, development uh, ever you might not know what activity is. So an activity is basically like a uh, basically like a screen of Android you could say it represents kind of like uh, one uh, aspect of the app and uh, uh, there are a bunch of different uh, templates here we can either choose no activity just an empty project or we can start with an empty activity etc you have got some other stuff here but uh, we are not going to choose any of these ones because this is just for like regular Kotlin or Java apps and uh, we want to uh, for, uh, of course develop our game in C++ so for that we are going to use this uh, we can use either this native C++ but that's just going to give us uh, uh, C++ support without any specific game development features but we want to use the Android game development kit for that we are going to select this game activity template so this will just uh, uh, create our uh, C++ uh, you know project with this game activity and we are going to hit next and here you have got a bunch of different configurations here you can choose what you want to do I'm going to just hit my game for the project name uh, you can choose whatever you want of course you can choose uh, any package name and you can uh, here you can choose where you want to actually store the project so for this language this is basically the language for you know the regular uh, Android stuff and uh, we can choose either Java or Kotlin here and this is like the language in which the default code of the template will be written uh, you can of course mix Java and Kotlin but we are actually not going to be programming too much in either Java or Kotlin so it doesn't really matter which one you choose we are going to just use Kotlin because that's a more, a more modern version and uh, for the minimum SDK we are going to just choose API 30 and uh, uh, this means Android 11 and for the build configuration you should just go with the recommended one and I'm going to hit next here and by the way the build configuration was for the uh, Kotlin and uh, you know, the main Android project for the C++ one we are going to be using CMake so I'm going to hit next here and for the C++ standard we are going to just choose C++17 because that's the uh, latest standard that's supported here and I'm going to just select C++17 and with that you can just hit finish to actually create your project. Alright so in a little while you should have your uh, project set up basically and uh, the grid of things should be complete and Android Studio should be giving no problems or anything. So if everything is working then we can get started. Now your layout might be a bit different than this. This is because I have enabled the new layout so if you go under settings, file settings then you can go under advanced settings, uh, not actually advanced settings, you can go under uh, new UI and you can enable this because uh, uh, I just uh, you know I just prefer the new UI. You can keep using the old one uh, if you want to. It's the totally to personal preference. So anyways to get started this is uh, by default as you can see our main activity.kotlin file is opened up. Now there is not really too much here so uh, all we really have here is that this uh, hide system UI function which is using some deprecated functionality but uh, uh, well uh, we don't really care because uh, whatever. And this basically has the uh, typically sets the system UI to be not visible you know uh, everything because we don't want anything to be uh, visible basically so that uh, uh, you know our uh, all of the screen is basically controlled by our C++ code and our application so we just set everything to hidden whenever our uh, whenever we get the focus uh, of the window and then uh, for the initialization this is the part where we actually load a call system dot load library this is a function uh, which uh, you know, uh, loads our actual C++ library which is called my game and this uh, basically passes the control over to our C++ application. So to get started with that we are going to just close this and we are going to go under, as you can see this is basically our project view here and uh, if this is your first time in an, uh, in basically Android Studio or an IntelliJ product you might be a little bit overwhelmed by all of the buttons and stuff here but don't worry we will go over these one by one and uh, uh, you know and there's uh, there are a lot of things but uh, 
uh, not all of them you have to use so anyways we'll understand what every uh, thing does here in a little while so anyway this is our project uh, you know uh, tab here where we've got all of the project files and in here if you go under app you can see we've got this cpp folder here which basically has all of our uh, c++ source files and as you can see there are quite a lot of these this is because the game development kit by default comes with uh, quite uh, quite an extensive uh, you know setup and everything and this is nice uh, this is nice to have a template like this to you know just get started really quickly but we are actually going to go ahead and delete everything this is because we are going to get started from the very beginning make sure not to delete the cmake lists and uh, we are going to actually delete everything here and uh, just delete anyway and uh, we, the reason we delete that is because if this is your first time learning you should probably understand how everything works so for that we are going to get started from the very beginning so this is uh, we are going to go under our cmake list and as we no longer have any of these files we are going to remove this from our add library command and uh, if you have not uh, if you don't have any experience with cmake this might not make much sense like what is this but cmake is basically like a build system and uh, uh, to build this we can do this add library is the command that I actually builds our main game library as you can see it's called my game my game and here we have added all of our cpp files we are going to just uh, leave main.cpp here which we are going to just create in a second and the other files we are going to remove as we add more cpp files we will need to add all of those here so anyways i'm going to right click on the cpp and hit new c++ source file and i'm going to just call it main.cpp so this uh, main.cpp basically is uh, the um, is going to be contain our main function and here we are going to get started with the actual programming so in here we need to include the game activity slash native app glue slash android native app glue dot c not the header file but instead the c file once we have included that we are we, have, we are all set with our includes and now we can create our main function so to create that the main function is called android main it has a return type of void and this is going to be called android main and this takes a single argument which is a pointer to the struct android app so we're going to have a pointer to that we're going to just call it app and this is basically our main function the signature of it looks like and to get started with the uh, you know actually implementing this we are going to implement a uh, simple do while loop and uh, this is going to be our main game loop and we're going to run this while our app is does not request a destruction so this destroy requested is present in the uh, android uh, app uh, here the uh, android app struct and uh, if this destroy requested is um, uh, non-zero which means it's true then that means that uh, uh, our game activity is being destroyed and we just need to f our app thread to complete so basically we need this android main function to end at that uh, point and uh, with our do while loop we are gonna inside of this we are going to start off by uh, checking for any events just like you would do in a normal desktop application so events basically mean that our uh, you know the operating system will send us various events for stuff like input and other stuff so we need to actually you know register those and get those so for that we are going to create two structures uh, structures one is going to be a pointer to a struct of type android pole source which we are going to just call pole source here and uh, then our the actual events are going to be represented by a single integer the event is going to be represented by a single integer here and uh, to get that we are going to go ahead and run a while loop and we are going to use a looper underscore poll all this is going to get all of our uh, one by one is going to get all of the events that the app is giving us the first argument is a timeout we are going to just leave it at zero the second argument we don't really care about that pass the null pointer for the events we are going to just go ahead and pass up our, you know the address of our events variable so that we actually get the events and for the out data we are going to go ahead and uh, uh, we are going to have to cast to a void pointer pointer our pole source so we are going to just take our pole source and cast that to a void pointer pointer this is basically a pointer to pointer uh, so that we can you know use this like that and once we have got this what we are going to do is we are going to uh, for each of the event that we get we are going to check if our pole source is not null because you know you can just set it to null if it is not null we are going to go ahead and call the process function on this this is just a function pointer present inside that the first argument takes is the app and the second one is our actual pole source and we're going to just do that and that's pretty much all we need to do uh, as far as the basic structure of the main loop is concerned uh, here of course we are going to you know update our game and then we are going to uh, render our game and then we are going to you know uh, do some other stuff whatever we want to do but uh, uh, this is going to be our basic uh, the skeleton basically of our application and, uh, and this is what we are gonna uh, use to you know have our basically we, this is 
is going to be our main application loop and then we are going to uh, you know put the actual uh, game source code in a separate file we'll call the appropriate functions here uh, so uh, before we actually get started with testing this there is one more little thing that I'd like to do which is that if you open up this Android app you can see there is a callback here uh, which is required and this is called the on app command which basically whenever we are there are uh, any app commands it calls this uh, callback so we're gonna go ahead and have to specify that so we're going to say on app command is equal to we're gonna just say on app command this is gonna be a function that we're going to create now so here we are going to create a function called on app command and this is going to take our android app pointer uh, android point uh, app uh, pointer called app and the other argument as you can see is supposed to be an int32 which is the actual command so we're going to just say int32 underscore t command and this uh, in this we just need to process the command so we're going to just use a switch condition with our uh, cmd and here by default we are going to do nothing of course and uh, uh, if there is like uh, if um, we are going to check for uh, for example Android uh, as you can see the constants for this begin with app CMD whatever so we can go ahead and say app CMD uh, for example start and this is going to basically be our when we are starting our app so for here we are going to try to log something to our uh, you know to the console and this is one of the most important things which is that we can log stuff from our application to the console uh, and we can do this by uh, going ahead and including the android slash log dot h header now this consists of a function for logging stuff and we can call uh, android log uh, actually it's called if i open this up and you can see we have got our uh, function here android log write and android log print here uh, we are going to use a print one of course because that's like printf so we want to use that and here this is uh, a function it takes first of all our uh, priority so we can go ahead and say uh, actually android uh, log uh, for example we can say something like info and then we can for the tag we can just uh, pass any tag here this is going to if you open up this panel here which is the logging panel it consists of uh, uh, it you know gives us tags to separate kind of uh, where our uh, logging message is coming from we are going to just go ahead and say log here and uh, for the actual message you can say whatever you want of course we are going to say starting app like that and this is going to basically print that message to our uh, log get panel here when we try to run this similarly we are going to go ahead and implement this for the termination uh, here termination window there's also I think uh, uh, create uh, there's also a uh, init window here we are going to actually print on that instead of uh, that because uh, you know starting our app is pretty obvious it will happen when our Android main starts but we need to care about where the windows is created so we might want to print that so we can say initializing window uh, here initializing the window and uh, at the when we are terminating the window we can just say that terminating the window and uh, this is going to basically be some informational messages and uh, currently as you can see this is kind of an annoying way to write this in the next video we're going to create a macro like wrapper around this so that it's a bit easier so we're going to do that in the next video but for this video this, this is going to be uh, basically how the skeleton of our application and we can try to run this to see how it works now to run this you can either connect a real physical device to it or you can use like a uh, you know you can pair a real device with a wi-fi or you can use a virtual device to create a virtual device you can go under device manager i have already got one here and uh, you can see we can create a virtual device as well for that you can just select uh, any phone that you want you can hit next you can select a system image and then you can hit next and then you can uh, set the name and then you can hit finish and it should probably just create that it's uh, uh, pretty simple and then we can go ahead and run it on that and see how it works so anyways once it's uh, finished compiling everything and you uh, your uh, emulator opens up you should be presented with a black screen like this because obviously we are not drawing anything but hopefully the system UI should not be visible and if you open up the logcat panel I have added a filter here saying that only display the messages with the tag of log which means the messages that we print you can see that it does say initializing the window and if I remove this one you can see that it uh, says that uh, if I go actually up here it's actually saying that uh, if I can actually 
you can find it so you can see that it's uh, doing that here and you can see it does it after our app command in its window and this is an informational message as you can see it says that and if I go ahead and get the, the actual uh, you know emulator and I close the uh, application you should see that it says that terminating the window app command termination window and then it says that so as you can see this is working quite well and uh, this is gonna be pretty much it for this video I'll see you in the next one in which we are gonna actually get started with the, you know doing the update and rendering part and actually set up our rendering with OpenGL ES so that's going to be pretty awesome make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that and share this video with other people as well and I'll see you in the next one and bye